Hello. Hello. Okay, well, you missed an amazing goof. I just want you all to know. I did a whole bit. There was a whole bit. I did a whole ass bit. And then looked over at stream, looked over at chat, and it was just a sea of people saying F question mark. Can't believe it. Uh, no, I was perfectly fine. The stream just went down. <laughs> it was a great bit. Thank you. It's fine. I'll. <laughs> I also just spilled my coffee. It's a good day. I'm going to pop it in my pocket for next time. In the meantime, let's. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Hello. Welcome to Sunday afternoon, Duger. With me, Duger. Everything looks so autumn y. Yeah. Um, autumn color palettes are my favorite. It's really difficult for me to transition into something that isn't fall and winter. <laughs> you did. It's okay, though. I'll do the bit again. Just not today. I don't have the strength. <laughs> It crashed so bad, I still have a black screen. What happened here? What the heck? Oh, well. <laughs> this what it is. If you guys are still refreshing and it's not popping up, I'm going to say that's a Twitch issue. I know I said that in the same tone and attitude as someone saying skill issue, but I don't think it's on my end. If people are, are constantly refreshing and not seeing anything when other people can see me just fine, I think that's a Twitch issue, yeah. Yeah. A classic twitch you. <laughs> I don't know what the best word is. We'll start, we'll try to like verbalize all of these options and see which one has the best mouth feel, you know? Do you guys remember the game Knights and Bikes? Those of you who can see me. <laughs> For those of you who I am a real person involved in uh, in the viewing experience currently, if you remember the game Knights and Bikes, which we played on stream, um, there is we've been we've been going on a whole audiobook deep dive with my kiddo uh, because I was explaining the other day that a, a long, long time ago. Um, I don't know, six or seven years ago, if I had to guess, Co-Optional Podcast was sponsored by Audible. And we were all given a certain amount of free membership to Audible. Uh, but it was one of those things where it was like, but we need your, we need your, your card information. It's free, but we need your card information. Right, it was one of those things. So I, of course have wound up with an Audible membership for years now that I have not really used because <laughs> I forgot it existed. Um, and I was looking at it and I was like, I wonder if there are good kids books on Audible. There are. So we've been, we've been uh, on a journey here, Clarky and I, because there's a bunch of stuff that if you have a membership, I'm not sponsored. If they want to sponsor me though, they can hit me up. But there's a bunch of stuff on there that's just like included. Um, there are like five different fully voice acted Hilda audiobooks that are like an hour and a half each. She loves those. 
Um, and it turns out there is a three and a half hour, also fully voice acted audiobook of Nights and Bikes. I was so shocked. I was like, what the hell? And it has amazing reviews. So I turned it on today. Um, Clark realized that she never spent, uh, there's, there's a specific family member that will always just give all of the kids money <laughs> on Christmas because they just don't know what to get them, which is so fair. So um, she realized she never spent her Christmas money and was like, I want to get something. So we needed to go get chicken food anyway. <laughs> Because I ran out of pellets. Because rodents keep getting into the coop and taking all their food. It's a whole issue that I'm dealing with. But anyway, we had to go get chicken food. Um, and while we were there, uh, she found like a science book that she really wanted. So she bought the science book, whatever. And I was like, hey, do you want to listen to something while you're looking at that? And she was like, sure. And so I just put it on just to see. And she is so invested. So invested. I feel like I need to to make like a roundup thing on TikTok or something that's like, hey, my kid is suddenly into audiobooks. Here are the ones that she's enjoyed, <laughs> sort of a thing. But it feels like they shouldn't all be stuff on Audible. We downloaded, because she has a library card now, a library card. So we downloaded um, Libby and whatever, B Borrow Box or whatever the other one is that's like, that's like a library app. Um, and both of them apparently have audiobooks on them, so I want to troll through that as well. But it's been fun. It's cool. The fully voice acted ones are so fun for little kids. You know, it, it really just like keeps them super engaged. She ran it because we have a tiny little Bluetooth speaker that we bought forever ago that has become Clark's speaker. Um, so if we're playing something on the phone, we just play it through the speaker and she can just walk around the house with this little speaker, right? So we've been using that for the audiobooks. She ran in with the speaker and was like, Mommy, do you know who Mr. Quackers is? And I was like, I I assume it's some it's a bird. And she was like, It's a crazy goose. There's a crazy goose in this story, mommy. And then she ran away. So she's super into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, I said this, I said this the other day, but if you're trying to find like, um, you know, alternate sort of stuff, uh, for your kids to listen to or engage with while they're doing other things, um, try out audiobooks, dude. It's been very fun. Because uh, a lot of them, the, the issue that I always had with uh, Tony's is they're really short. They're a lot of money for basically like audiobook amiibos, right? <laughs> they're a lot of money. Uh, and I would, anytime I got one, I would go on the website and double check how long they were. Because sometimes they're literally like only 15 minutes of content on one of these little, you know figurines um every audiobook that we've found for like around her age is at least an hour it's been tight <laughs> it's been so tight so Peter and the Wolf on cassette was fun as a kiddo. I wonder if there's an audiobook of Peter and the Wolf. I've I that was not a part of my childhood. I don't even know about it. Hold on. Peter and the Wolf. David Attenborough? Is that the one? 
Prokofiev's modern classic retold by Sir David Attenborough. <laughs> With the BBC Philharmonic Orchestra. Oh my gosh, is this it? It has three out of five stars, I wonder why. Is there an alternate version? Oops. Prokofiev's Peter and the Wolf. Prokofiev's Peter and the Wolf. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. Narrated by Sophia Loren, narrated by Jim Dale. Narrated by the Peter Pan players. Hmm. Welcome, Raiders. Hello. We're talking about audiobooks. And chat was talking about... Um, uh, Peter and the Wolf audiobook, which I did not know existed. Um, so we're looking to see if it's available anywhere, <laughs> basically. I'll look on... This seems like the sort of thing that's probably on Libby or something similar. So I'll check. I will check. I do know that the other ones that I've talked about... Um, I haven't bothered to check if they're on other platforms because uh, they were produced by Audible, uh, I'm pretty sure. The Nimona ones and Nights and Bikes. Room is in followers only, if that's intended. Uh, yeah, we always have it in followers only. Octo forgot he was in followers only for like two years. We always leave it on. You should, guys, if you could see my ban list, <laughs> I was looking through it the other day uh, for a reason, I promise, but the number of bot accounts that I had to scroll through <laughs> was insane. <laughs> um, yeah, we leave it in followers only uh, because it, it discourages like um, actual humans doing weird shit, but it also is just one more barrier between for bots you know bots can't just come in and start like spewing shit they have to the bot has to follow me <laughs> bots are getting so bad dude <sighs> one of my favorite things in the world is uh going to because again i'm not on twitter anymore I love when I get linked to somebody's post and directly under the post is just a bunch of nonsense, right? Or like immediately after, because there's a bunch of YouTube bots now, right? Um, immediately after Jesse puts up a Geek Enders and like the very first comment is just like a picture of boobs and it says, I love this content. <laughs> this is amazing content. You always create such quality content. Incredible. <laughs> it's a real person. They love his content, guys. <laughs> I love things just like this. I would I would love for there to be more content just like this one. <laughs> just really vague. I love it. If you love content like this, you should click my link. Right? Honestly, I would take reply accounts. If it meant that every bot just burst into flame, <laughs> I would take I would take a whole resurgence of reply accounts. Hmm. 
Anywho. An update. Ready? I did not try to do... Uh, sorry. Sorry. Let me, let me pitch this better. Here's a lazy makeup update. Okay. So um, I, I tried for, you know, 15 minutes the, the self-tanner contouring thing, and then I got freaked out and took it off because I don't use tanner, and I, I just could not believe that something that looked that intense was not going to, like, permanently make my face look really weird. So I immediately washed it off, and I said that I would, I would suck it up and try it again over the weekend, and I did not. <laughs> And I did not, okay? I let you down on that one. Um, but the other two that we have tried, eyebrow tint. This shit is, is great. Big fan, okay? I feel like it's, it's really, it's lasted. Um, because if you'll recall, like these areas of my eyebrows are normally see-through. <laughs> they basically don't exist. It's definitely started to wear off a bit on here uh, and over here, but they're still darker than they normally are. Um, and here is definitely still darker. The eyebrow tint works. That shit works for sure. Uh, the one that I got is the Maybelline one. Um, and it's literally just like a weird goop. It's a weird goop stuff. And you take it out and you goop and you goop. Um, I gooped three separate times because I was scared of the goop. <laughs> this is a theme. <laughs> I was scared of the goop. I didn't know how goop it was going to be, you know? So I did like a little goop and then you let it dry and then, you, and then it peels off. Um, and it worked fine. So then I, little, I did a little goop here, peeled it off, worked fine. And then I filled in the blanks of where uh, I had been too scared of the goop. So three goops uh, and, it was and it turned out totally fine. So the other thing that I tried uh, was lashes. And I still, so my issue here, because uh, a bunch of people were like, if you put them on right, they can last more than a day. Now I already think that lashes, like full ass lashes, um, are not uncomfortable, but like, not the sort of thing that I would want on for a long time, right? But I was like, I'll see how it feels to leave them on overnight. Hilarious, because they just fell off. <laughs> they just came off, dude. Um, so, fine. I was totally fine with that as well, because trying to wash my face, because I, I wore makeup that day as well, because I was like, I'm trying to get the full ass effect, right? Um, I did not, there was no way for me to feel like my eyes were actually clean with leaving the lashes on. It just wasn't happening. Um, so I also got as a, as a try, just those little like individual lashes. I was like, maybe it's different if you just put like two individual lashes on, on either side. Um, maybe it feels less like you have another human on your face, you know? Um, but, but full, a full lash trying to leave that shit on for a long time. I do not recommend. <laughs> I don't recommend. They just make, they make your eyelids heavier. It feels impossible to clean your face. Um, so, so far lashes for for longer than a day unless unless they are like lash extensions which is a different thing and a different process um just putting lashes on for more than a day is not my bag as of now i will try another method but but just putting them on like normal and then expecting to leave them on for longer than a day is not happening eyebrow tint though absolutely big fan um so, I've never worn fake lashes. I'm allergic to a lot of adhesives. So I'm fascinated by what it's like to see wearing them. Um, I really like the effect of fake lashes. I had never ever used them until, 
I started doing like daily bite and things and had my makeup done for me. Um, I think lashes are tight. I love them. Uh, but yes, if they make, they make your, uh, like your lash line just feel heavier. It's not significantly heavier, but it's like, I don't know. When I'm reading something and a human has a tail, bear with me. <laughs> when I'm reading something and a human has a tail and they have to do the dialogue of like, my balance feels different. That's what I feel like it's in the same tree, right? You put, it's, it's, not that, it's not that it's fucking you up, but like your eyelids just feel different. And they don't, they don't stop feeling different, which is why... I'm wondering if individual lashes, number one, are just better in general, just feel nicer if you don't need like a whole like, if it, maybe it just feels nicer just to have a couple like tiny lashes on instead. Um, but also the, the like longevity of that might be better. It might just not feel like a tail on your face. I don't know. <laughs> Puts on lashes, my balance feels different. Yeah, you get it, right? <laughs> Unrelated, but if you have to use eye tracking, long lashes can make them think your eyes are more closed. Interesting. So I guess VTubers don't wear them, I would assume. <laughs> what shows are you watching where people have tails and or grow tails? Anime. I watch a lot of anime. I watched Dragon Ball as a child, stage one. I watched Sayuki, stage two. I was saying this in Discord, but Sam and I started solo leveling last night. I'm not gonna spoil anything about anything that I'm watching, but um, we started watching solo leveling last night because we caught up with Dungeon Meshi. And um, the whole time that I was watching it, I was like, have I read this? Here's the problem. The concept of solo leveling, I've definitely read before, but I can't tell, I wasn't, when I watched solo leveling, it didn't feel like I knew what was gonna happen. I had no recollection of like these characters, this world, this exact stuff. But I've, I've definitely, Oh yeah, episode one sucks. <laughs> to the person who said episode one was too bland for me, episode one sucks, I think. They really, they really needed to do like an extra long episode one with this show, I think. Um, but yeah, the, the concept has definitely been done a couple times and I can't, I can't tell if I've, if I read this already. <laughs> Did I read this manhwa? I don't know. Cause it is a manhwa, right? It's not, it's not a, a light novel. Or is it both? Maybe it's both. <laughs> I agree. I do agree with that. Uh, this has nothing to do with the story, but when the main character showed up, I was like, fuck. <laughs> I pointed at the TV and looked at Sam and was like, why does every fucking protagonist look like this? <laughs> we are in this weird, like, protagonist concept desert right now where, like, every goddamn main character looks like this guy. <laughs> so irritated <laughs> John protagonist yeah it's specifically I think 
There's there is a look to um the like isekai main character. You know? Yeah, the anime matrix is reusing the same person. Exactly. Anyway. <laughs> That's what I said. I said the same thing. I was like, I feel like this is Sword Art Online's fault. Maybe it's not. But I feel like this is Sword Art Online's fault. <laughs> That's what Sam said. Sam said maybe it's because it's it's like the... Um, he, he basically, in a roundabout way, said that it's a lot like Twilight. <laughs> he was like, this character is Bella. This is, this is the, this is the just like, every man, you know? He's like, they can't make them too cool. Then you can't power fantasy with them. I was like, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. Have you watched that time I got reincarnated as a slime? Absolutely. Sam and I love that show. I think that's so good. It's so common. There's a TV tropes page called the stock light novel hero. <laughs> that's amazing. I love that. Anyway, uh, we're really enjoying it. So all, all of this to say, all, all of this shit talking to, to say that we're really enjoying it. But the whole time I had this like uncanny deja vu-esque feeling of like, have I read this? I don't know if I've read this. I maybe, or maybe this concept's just been done a couple times and I used to do a manga podcast. <laughs> and maybe that's why. I don't know. Yeah, we also watched the spider one. The spider one was pretty cute. I've still only watched a couple episodes of Freer in. I need to get on that. Because it's cute. It is really cute. Misfit at magic school shows are also very samey to me. Yeah. Those sorts of shows. I think um, I'm trying to figure out how to put this in a way where it doesn't feel like I'm mocking people that really like that. Sam loves that shit. He, he loves that trope. Um, I think that that's one of those concepts that, that some people love and they will continue to love them. Just like, yes, put me in a magic school. I want to see like why this kid that everybody hates is, you know, has something interesting about them at magic school. You know, they're just they're cool. Uh, I've, I've never, I've never really gotten into those. Maybe it's easy to relate to if your school experience sucked. That's true. I used to lay awake in bed and think to myself, if tomorrow I wake up and I'm a Sailor Scout, <laughs> if tomorrow I wake up and I'm a Sailor Scout, it's over for these bitches. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they're going to eat their words about me, dude. If I wake up tomorrow and I have superpowers, let's go. And then I'd wake up and it would not happen. <laughs> I 
The Apothecary Diaries MC is the same VA as the Isekai Spider. <gasps> Very cute voice. Have you checked out the Avatar live action? I was surprised I didn't hate it. We have not watched it. No, I don't really have an interest in watching it. Um, but I'm really curious to see how people feel about it. I think I think the um, it wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. Sort of takes are going to be really far and few between. I think people are going to try to like really go hard one way or the other. <laughs> unfortunately, um, so I'll be more I'll be more interested in you know. People that aren't just like, everything about it was terrible, you know. Yeah, that's kind of how I've been feeling too. I'm like, it, I don't really want to watch the live action, um, but I, everybody talking about Avatar is making me really want to watch, rewatch normal Avatar. <laughs> My reaction was similar to the One Piece live action. Huh, not too bad. We really liked the One Piece live action. I've, I've talked a little bit about my gripes. Um, and the Yu Yu Hakusho live action, I really liked, despite having an entire text file in my phone that's entirely things that piss me off. <laughs> They're not, there's just no way for them to do a live action anime anything and have, uh, you know, and, and have the story just go exactly as it did in the thing. I get that, it's fine. <gasps> Bro. I think a Samurai Shampoo live action would go so hard. They just have to cast it right. Like like 90%, maybe more. No, 90% of Samurai Champloo and what made it great was those three characters. The other 10% was the fucking banging soundtrack. So completely doable in live action. <laughs> they would need a really good choreographer for Mugen. True. The way that he fought was like really unique. <clears throat> Yeah, I've said this I've said this basically every year since I had Clark, but I would love to get back into the swing of like watching at least the first episode of um a bunch of stuff each season. I think that that would be nice. 
because I know I keep missing out on good shit, you know? <laughs> Sam and I pretty much every season have like one, maybe two shows that we watch together. And everything else sits in drafts, you know? <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't, nothing happens with it. I've seen a bunch of clips of Sign of Affection. I've, I haven't watched it, though. I want to watch Samurai Shampoo again. It's good. I watch it. I want to say I used to watch it like every year because I just loved it. It's my favorite anime. Um, I watch it like every two or three years now. I'm, I'm due a rewatch. I'm due a Samurai Shampoo rewatch. Oh my God, everyone's obsessed with Has Been Hotel, yeah. I had, there were, there were little things that I liked in Hell of a Boss, but, but overall the humor on it didn't work for me. So I haven't really bothered with Has Been Hotel. <clears throat> Has been is not as wild. That's good to know. <laughs> I know basically all of the songs from it, I think, because because everybody on TikTok is doing like dances and shit to the songs from it. Boy in the Heron, I've not walked out of a theater as confused for a long time. I did not. That's the that's the new Ghibli movie, right? No, I didn't watch that. I was an emotional ruin. Oh no. I was trying to stay awake through the boy and the heron in the cinema. I have, there have been a couple of Ghibli movies that I have seen in the cinema and I 100% was falling asleep. And I don't think that that necessarily means anything bad about the movie itself. It's just sometimes Ghibli stuff is just too, there's a, there's a vibe that is perfect to fall asleep to, you know? <laughs> Visually, I loved it, but I was very confused by everything. My partner fell asleep. Boy and the Heron was super weird. I can't wait to watch it again. Interesting. Yeah, they're relaxing most of the time. Yeah. <clears throat> I love those 
those memes that are comparisons of Miyazaki and Junji Ito. <laughs> They always make me laugh. It's like a reused joke at this point, but every time someone does it, it makes me laugh. Would you watch anime in the cinema in the UK, though? Do you mean like... Ghibli movies? Yeah, Ghibli movies 100% come into the cinema. I haven't had one to watch in the UK, so I haven't looked for that in the UK. But in America, yeah, they totally, the Ghibli movies always show up in the cinema in America. <gasps> Guys, we did it. We finally did it. We went to a roller skating thing. We found a roller skating thing and we went to it. And it was so fun. Um, huge. I thought it was going to be just like maybe a couple of people. It was massive. Tons of people. Uh, they do it They at this place that we went to. They do it all day long. Um, but the further into the day you get, the more people there are. So we went um, at like noon-ish, I guess. And there were a lot of people, but it was pretty chill. Um, and so Clark was having a great time and, uh, and she and I were skating and th there were so many kids there. It was such a good vibe. It was a very community vibe. There were so many kids there that would like come up to her and be like, Hey, try to keep your feet closer together. Or like, Hey, you know, try and make sure that you stay inside of these lines, like sort of a thing, just giving her pointers. Um, and it was so sweet. And there were a couple of times that she fell and a kid would stop and like stand in front of her while she was getting up to make sure she got up okay. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so sweet. I love this so much. And it was it wasn't all kids. It was it was all ages, tons of people. Um, but you know, Clark is a little skate beast now, so we would start skating together and she'd be like, bye, you're too slow for me. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, so it was really fun. And then, uh, as it progressed, there were just too many adults and not just too many adults, but like too many adults that were really good skaters that were going really fast around her and it freaked her out big time. So even though there were still tons of kids around, um, she's just small, you know, so she started to get really freaked out and then it, it went from bye I want to be on my own. I'm a big skater girl to I need to be holding somebody's hand. I'm really freaked out, you know. So we talked about it because she really didn't want to leave. But then when we left and we were like, that was really fun, wasn't it? She was like, uh, I didn't. I don't think it was that fun, actually. And Sam and I looked at each other like she was she literally didn't want to leave. <laughs> right? So we just left it. And then I talked to her about it this morning and I was like, I, you know, did you say that you didn't have a good time because it was really overwhelming at the end there? Like the music was really loud. By the way, they were playing bangers. Like the music was really loud. There were lots of people, you know, they turned the lights down a little bit. Was it just like too much at the end? And she was like, yeah. <laughs> so I said, okay, I think we should go back, but only be there early, right? We should just stay for the early section. Um, and make sure that we leave before they transition into more of like a roller disco sort of thing. Because I think that's when it got to be just like too much. And she was like, okay. But I know. They only do it on the weekends. I know in my heart that um, we're going to go back there. 
try to just do the early section. And then when we need to leave, she's going to be like, but I want to stay. But I want to stay. And I'll try to remind her this shit got too crazy. <laughs> this shit got too crazy. If you'll recall. But what can you do? <laughs> there were also a bunch of kids there that were part of like a skate team. And Clark was like, I want to do that. And I was like, you have to be in year seven. <laughs> it is for year seven to nine year olds, I asked. And she was like, no. Like, think of it this way. By the time you're in year seven, if you're, st if you're starting skating now, by the time you're in year seven, you're going to be so cool at skates. Like, you're going to be so comfy and confident. It's no problem. <laughs> the UK has roller derby, yeah. But yeah, I'm sure some of you uh, out there also have kids that are that are very. Um, I don't think fragile is the right word, but uh, have a very emotional reaction um, to like even for a split second feeling sort of out of their depth. And sometimes it's difficult to figure out what's the best way to encourage my kid to like push past this so that they can still have fun, you know? And I was really worried after yesterday. <laughs> I was really worried that she was going to be like, these elements that had nothing to do with skating made the experience hard for me and now I don't want to go back, right? So I was really glad that after having a conversation, she was like, yeah, we should try, we'll try, we should try going back. Um, because she definitely had fun. She definitely had fun. She's just remembering the things that were kind of scary about it, you know? I manage people who sound like that, and there's a lot of supporting them and building confidence. Yeah. Yeah. I, I try to help her focus on, like, uh, or, or try to help her come to, um come up with ideas of of how to you know still have fun with this thing we like but what are the variables we can control a bit more you know what are what are things we can do about this other stuff but it wasn't bad it was just too much you know did she bail no we had to drag her out of there But by the time we got to the car, I think she was like, holy shit. <laughs> oh, my God. That was so much, you know. It's also, I think a lot of her, like, really overstimulating activities are normally with other kids. And this was one of the first times that she was like, I want to do this activity really bad. And the activity was equal parts children and adults and she was one of the smallest people there you know um so how you know not getting intimidated by that but also recognizing your limits of like when there are too many big people around going fucking fast on skates it freaks me the fuck out <laughs> so what can i do about that i can leave before before all of these adults show up, right? So. Oh my gosh, yeah, I've just started my snowboarding life and my crazy 30 plus. Pushing past the uncomfortable moments is definitely a challenge, but the fun moments make me forget how much the hard falls have hurt. As a person that was overprotective, overprotected as a kid. I gotta say, great job parenting. Thank you.
And that's awesome that you're going for snowboarding. I had that when I went on holiday as a kid, my parents would want to go to disco in the evening, but it used to drive them nuts that I wouldn't want to go to sleep, but also wouldn't go to the disco. It was too overwhelming for me. Yeah. Kids, we've been running into this a lot lately. Um, kids, even, even when they have like a huge vocabulary and can, you know, communicate really well, um, kids and adults, when they get overwhelmed or stressed or anxious about something, it's really hard to put that feeling into words or to even figure out like why you're feeling that way. Um, I've talked a lot about how I, when Sam and I are having a disagreement about something or have something going on, I I frequently will enter into this weird brain space where like, I can't really explain how I'm feeling or why I feel that way or any of that. Right. Um, and so I'm trying really hard <laughs> to help Clark from an early age, be able to sort of either mentally or on paper figure out like, okay, this was the situation. These are the things about that situation that were hard. Can I do something about those things so that I can enjoy this thing, right? Or, you know, can I figure out what it was about that that I didn't like so I can communicate with my friends or with the other adults, you know, that are in my teacher, whatever. Can I figure out how to tell them what's going on up here for me, you know? Cause I, I think as, as an adult that struggles with that, I think that that's such a valuable skill to have. Um, so yeah. Is snowboarding or skiing easier? Sam insists that skiing is easier. I've only ever snowboarded. Um, Sam has talked about all three of us learning how to ski together which I think would be fun. Uh, the idea of having two, two things attached to me instead of one thing is stresses me out a little bit, but apparently it's easier. Yeah, it's crazy and I love it. I've fallen and I've fallen bad, but those one or two uh, good runs, they make it so worth it and so good. Yeah, and that's one of the things I can tell I think Clark can can push past and just keep skating and really enjoying skating because she falls all the time. And normally in her day-to-day -day life, if she falls, it's like, I fell, right? But when she's skating and she falls, her primary thought is, I want to get up and skate again. So she pushes past it so fast, like, ah, oh, my butt hurts, but I want to skate, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> you, you can tell that you really like a thing if the struggles that are just sort of part of that thing, um, you're, you're fine with it. You can just, you know. Skiing is easier, 100% agree. Skiing is easier because you don't have both feet fixated to the same board, I guess so. Balancing is a lot simpler with two platforms to stand on. Hmm, you all make good points, chat. <laughs> da, 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 da. Ba, 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 ba,
<sighs> Ugh. I had to do a like Mission Impossible style thing today. Every, every morning I go to see the chickens, right? To let them out and stuff. Um, and I go out there before the geese are out so that it's fine and I don't have to worry about crumble. Um, but they had a, a food shortage. So I was like, okay, we'll go get food for the chickies and, um, I will mission impossible to the coop and put the food in there and hope that crumble doesn't notice me. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, we have two geese. One of them has decided I'm his arch nemesis. He fully attacked me at one point, and so now I steer as far clear as possible of him because I do not want to deal with that shit again. Um, I haven't looked at my bruises in a while. Wait a sec. Are they still there? They're going away. It's starting to go away. This is where he bit me. <laughs> This is one of those smack marks. Um, yeah, he's a bitch. <laughs> crumble, fucking crumble. Um, just goose stuff, yeah. Anyways, so uh, so yeah, I. Bum, 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 bum. I crept to the fence, tossed the food over, <laughs> rolled over the fence, sat there for a sec, found Crumble. He didn't see me. Dun, 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 dun. Got inside the coop, poured the food in. He went. And I went, fuck, poured the food in, poured the food in, poured the food in, closed it up, scritched all the chickens, went, bye. <laughs> went out the door, locked the door. And as I'm like running, <laughs> as I'm running to the fence, he's like, <laughs> from far away. And he starts, <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, mm. <laughs> So I managed to get over the fence before he got to me. And then I got to be like, fuck you. Fuck you, goose. <laughs> no, I think we realized the pigs weren't going to want to hang out in Sam's office. So we sort of ditched that idea. They're huge now. They're so big. I love them. Yeah, they're doing great. They've got a, a huge area. Um, we're worming them really soon. And then we're going to move them to a new area of the field. Um, and then they've basically like tilled the soil for us in this huge section. So we're going to plant a bunch of wildflowers and things out there. Um, and the sheep are doing great as well. Yeah, the lambs are getting bigger. They're so cute. I thought y'all made friends with the geese. A lot has happened. Um, one of them is a gander. This was the beginning of it all. Uh, so they're, they're like adults now. They're adult geese. Um, one of them is a gander, which means he's a boy goose. And ganders have very specific behavior um we we got them uh under the or rather my sister-in-law got them under the assumption that they were both girls so they are not so uh crumble the boy the gander has started doing a lot of aggressive boy goose behavior which is um he has to be between us and apple at all times so he does a lot of like weird territory shit with the other goose. Um, he hisses at everybody. He like ducks down and does this, which means he's gonna like try to dive tackle you. Um, I'm the only person that he's attacked. So 
I've gotten to make lots of great jokes. Like, it's because I'm too handsome and he thinks I'm going to steal Apple from him because I'm just so hot like a goose. Uh, yeah. Um, he's not allowed near any kids anymore. Uh, we have a, we have a separate, we have like different gates that we've put up at this point. So he just goes into a different gated area. Um, so if any kids are around, he has to be in a different area. Uh, he's just not, he's not safe to be around for anybody except my, my sister-in-law and Sam, oddly enough, <laughs> they, he will not fuck with Sam whatsoever. And I think it's because he's big. Like he, he has never once tried to get aggro with the really like tall people in the family. Um, unfortunately I'm the opposite. So does this mean you could end up with baby geese? It does. It does. Yeah. Sam's a giant. You can't mess with him. Sam decided to do this whole like, uh, like dominance display thing. This was right after I got bit. <laughs> and he went out there and Crumble was there and Sam just started walking toward Crumble and Crumble was like, <laughs> literally walked him across the entire field just power walked after him. And he was like, leave me alone, dude. <laughs> Amazing. So. That's legit what you have to do. You have to charge back at them. Yeah. I guess if you're big enough, sure. That's exactly what I was told to do. And now I'm his sworn enemy. Uh, at one point, um, I had a big thing in my hand and he came around. This was before he actually like bit me. But uh, at one point he like came around the corner to sort of menace me for no reason. Uh, and I had a thing in my hand and I moved it in front right as he was hissing and it bonked him on the nose. And he was like, ow, <laughs> and walked away. So part of me is like, maybe I need to just treat him like a shark. And if he comes near me, I just bop him in the nose. <laughs> yeah. At one point I was like, what's, what's the new meta here? What should we be doing? Uh, and literally every single person on the farm was like, eat him. <laughs> So, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe one day we'll we'll eat crumble. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> crumble you're on thin ice. Yeah. We have, you know, at the very least, it's nice that that we have the space to be able to put him somewhere if the kids are around. But like, I don't want to eat him. None of us want to eat him. <laughs> we just want him to not attack us. <laughs> oh. Crumble thinks that's asking a lot. Yeah. Why did he get suddenly aggressive? Um, because he, it's um, mating season for geese, and it turns out he's a gander. He's a male goose. 
So he wants to attack absolutely everything. <laughs> yeah, puberty, basically. Duck testosterone. Yeah. I also love that. Maybe I should get an air horn. That's a great idea. <laughs> Just running at him honking. <laughs> I wouldn't use it unless I felt like, you know, cornered. <laughs> I'll ask my friend which goose proof trousers she wears for work. Legit, if you have a friend with goose proof trousers, I want them, yeah. <laughs> All right. It's just a suit of armor. Yeah. Hold me like a grudge. Hold me like a grudge. Yeah, yeah. Hold me like a grudge. I know you mean well, I know you mean well. Honk for ads. No, so my... This like big thick black jacket has honestly been the best protection. Most of the time when he tries to attack me, he just gets a big mouthful of this and I can't even feel it. The reason that, that this hurts so bad is because he got my leg. <laughs> Hold me like a grudge. Hold me like a grudge. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> Side note, hold on. Did you guys know that the Beatrix Potter collection, the 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 freaking Peter Rabbit collection of audiobooks, is narrated by Andrew Scott Moriarty himself? The hot priest himself, Andrew Scott. <laughs> it started playing and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I know that voice. So there you go. That's another one that is free <laughs> to listen to. Uh...
should wear a layer of habanero oil on your pants. They won't be able to taste it, I don't think. A bunch of birds can't taste peppers or like the, the shit that makes them spicy. Um, it's actually a thing that chefs will do sometimes is feed chickens tons of spicy peppers and then it affects the taste of their eggs. Kevlar! Kevlar over trousers, amazing. She recommended some keeper pants. Animal, oops, animal keeper pants. Goalkeeper? No. Stops bullets and geese. Mm -hmm. Goose-proof trousers. Animal management work action trousers. <laughs> Durable outdoor work trousers tailored to the female form. Goodness gracious. Well, but what about these helps with animal management, though? I'll figure this out later. <laughs> uh, oh! Oh! Action trousers for the guy on the go, you know? I know. My geese need to be able to tell. They say girl in big letters on the butt. I didn't show you the picture, but that's what they meant. I had to be no nonsense mommy yesterday. I don't like being no nonsense mommy, but I had to. I had to yesterday. Because we've been doing really well with like meals. Um, but lately, I don't know why. I guess kids naturally try to like push boundaries, you know? Um, and we somehow got back into this weird swing of of Clark being like, I don't, of us making dinner, and then Clark being like, I don't wanna eat this. I'm gonna go make myself a piece of toast. Which, on one hand, I'm like, at least I'm not making you a different thing. But on the other hand, <laughs> I don't like this, like, I refuse to eat any of this. I'm just going to eat toast every night. No, we're not doing that shit. We're not doing that shit, okay? So, like, <laughs> I was like, all right, family meeting <laughs> right now. It's like, guys, I love making dinner. I love making dinner for you guys. I love, I love feeding my little family. It makes me happy, all right? Um... I'm not here to force feed anybody that uh, anything that they don't want. But I made dinner. Okay? We're not we're not swapping dinner out for a different thing, okay? We're going to give a shot to what's been offered here. Cuz this is annoying the shit out of me. <laughs> I don't want It's okay if inside in your brain you're like 
I don't like this specific thing, but I make an effort to make sure that every meal has something that I know that you like and eat. Okay, so I'm, I'm done. I'm over it, all right? <laughs> We're not doing the, actually, fuck you, mommy. I'm eating toast. We're not doing that shit anymore, okay? I don't, I, it's driving me crazy. <laughs> So, and unfortunately, Sam had to get caught in the crossfire because I was like, I don't want this to be a Clark, fuck you, actually, because that's not what it was, right? <laughs> it was, <laughs> it's like, all right, for the family at large, I'm not doing a, you know, hanging out, being the best mom I can in the morning, working my ass off on stream and whatever, and then the second I'm done with stream, doing dinner. Again, I love that. I want to be making dinner. I enjoy making dinner. I ask to make dinner. So, so that's dinner, right? <laughs> that's dinner, okay? It's dinner, dude. Because I feel like I'm really, I feel like I'm really fair about it. I involve Clark in making the meal, the, the meal plan for the week. I ask her for her input on what she wants to eat. I always make sure there's something on the plate that she likes. I am well aware of the things that she likes and will eat. I feel like I'm really fair about it and I don't force her to eat anything. So, it's not toast. <laughs> if you wanna say, hey, I'm gonna make myself a piece of toast to have with my dinner, okay, daddy does that sometimes. Sam does that all the time. He'll be like, I think this would be better with bread. And I go, go for it, champ. And he makes bread, right? That's different from yuck. I want toast instead. No. <laughs> yeah. We do we do a good mix, right? We have a few things every week that are like bang on she enjoys them she'll even help us make them right tonight is an example of something that is a combo of things that she likes and wants to help make and a thing that that she's really iffy about we're doing tomato soup and sandwiches used to love tomato soup doesn't really eat it anymore Uh, recently has come around on cheese sandwiches. So she makes the cheese sandwiches, toasts the ones for the people who want them toasted, and then we make the soup. Maybe she won't have the soup. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. It's there. I will always give it to her. And she can decide if she wants to eat it or not. Um, it's, it's whatever. But I think the thing that really pushed me over the edge yesterday was hearing for like the millionth time, but that's not what I want. I don't give a shit, dude. <laughs> I don't care, dude. I make you the breakfast that you want and the lunch that you want almost every time. Both of us, Sam and I, right? We make you food that you want to eat throughout the day. And then dinner's for everybody, okay? And whatever dinner is, that's dinner, dude. <sighs> I tried baking for the first time on Friday. <gasps> How'd it go? Please <laughs> get what you want. I got to hit Clark with the... 
you're creative and intelligent, uh, surely you can find something to do. I got to hit her with one of those <laughs> yesterday. She was like, I'm bored. I was like, you can't be bored. You're amazing and creative and intelligent. It's impossible for you to be bored. And then she made a face. <laughs> like, that didn't fix it, mom. I was like, homie, we can't be having fun all the time. We can't be having fun all the time. It's impossible. But you have so many things available to you to create fun. Go. Be free with your brain and your toast. God. <laughs> Can you tell yesterday was a frustrating day for me as a parent? <laughs> we had a great day today. Zero issues. Zero issues. I'm just, I'm just pulling out pulling out problems from yesterday. As a kid, I was the worst with telling my parents I was bored. I remember the how can you be bored talk back when I was a kid. I, I was never bored when I was a kid. Um, but I spent almost every minute out in the woods. Again, I grew up on a farm with woodlands all around me. I literally would just go out into the woods and just stay there all day. I don't know how I never hurt myself. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I didn't frequently come back with grievous injuries. Um, but I definitely wasn't bored ever. Uh, but, you know, I, I have to acknowledge that Again, not to screen panic. I have no interest in screen panicking over, you know, parenting and kids and stuff. But, but I do think there are so many things available to, like, stimulate kids' brains right now that it's almost, it's almost like, worse. This, this feeling of, like, I have nothing to do is, like, more intense probably than it ever has been. Um... So, yeah. I've, I started calling it boredom training now. <laughs> if she's like, can I watch a thing? And I'm like, uh, I think we've watched enough. I think we've watched enough right now. I think we should do something different. If she complains, I'll be like, it's boredom training, dude. It's boredom training. What are you going to do with this bored moment you have? That's my sister's move. If you say, if you, if one of her kids would say that they were bored, she'd be like, awesome. My bathroom needs to be cleaned so badly. Boredom is super useful. That's, I, I think that's true. I think probably, I say that I wasn't ever bored, but I think I was bored all the time. It's just that I got really good at, at filling the time, you know, with, with stuff. I came up with all sorts of things to fill time with. Um, so. I know how to juggle because of boredom. Did it finally pop? Oh my God, it did. I had a huge zit in my ear. <laughs> I've had a huge zit in my ear for days. And I was like, it feels huge. Oh my gosh, it's bleeding so much. <laughs> Anyways, how are you guys?
Oh, there we go. Okay, that's better. <laughs> it's probably for the best. Anywho, we can move on from kid stuff. Especially food things, uh, I think, you know. It's hard. Food stuff is really hard because you, as, as, uh, as the adult in the situation, you want to make sure that they are getting everything that they need and that you're exposing them to lots of different foods while also not doing the like you have to eat this right which is why I try to make it really clear I don't force feed my kid I don't make my kid eat shit that she doesn't want to eat but at the same time you know <laughs> you've gotta you've gotta also have the conversation of like bro your body has to run on stuff you know let's talk about zits instead we absolutely can <laughs> there's a little girl with arfit on insta the comments are crazy oh my gosh I can't imagine. I didn't even know ARFID was a thing. Um, I found out that that was a thing really recently. And I was like, geez, that must be so difficult. Love getting rid of zits, not watching people pop them. That's so fair. I've been messing with this one for so long. And I had Sam look at it yesterday. And he was like, yeah, it's, it's not ready. And I was like, but it hurts so bad. It hurts so bad. And he was like, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. It's hard, like, somebody, somebody was mentioning nose versus ear zits. Like, any of these areas where the skin is really tight and thin, it just, it kills, dude. It murders the feeling. It's bad. I had to let it cook. You're right. <laughs> I want to play Helldiver so bad. I still haven't. I know you mean well. I know you mean well. Why is that song stuck in my head? I can't remember the last time I listened to that song. Yeah, um, me, Summer, Bree, and... Um, uh, Manda talked about playing it. 
just life stuff gets in the way, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I was talking with Sam. I was like, I really want to play that game. I should find somebody to play with. And he was like, what the fuck? Play with me. <laughs> Which typically is not his response. Not because he doesn't like to play games with me, but like... A, a game that's more competitive, I think, typically, uh, you know, it would be like if if I was like, I think I want to get into League. Would he say, oh, we should team up in League? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has the ELO to think about. Exactly. I still think Dark Tide is fun. Have you seen Bandle Tail? I have not. Oh, it's a league game. Bow, 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 bow. Hold me, hold me like a grudge. I did play Vermintide. Da 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 Yeah, Quiston works at, at Riot, so I'm not surprised that her name is gonna start showing up on games. Da 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 Ba 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 It's called Hold Me Like a Grudge by Fallout Boy and for some reason it's stuck in my head today. So hold me like a grudge. It's a good song. It's a tune. When I first started hanging out with Sam's family, everybody was sick. If a song came on that they liked, they would say, tune. And I don't think that slang stuck around for very long. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I still think about it sometimes. <laughs> Arnar, oh my goodness, thank you so much for 30 gift subs. Goodness gracious, welcome to the cat gang, everybody. If you were gifted a sub, please say thank you. You're right, tune, not tune. You're right, you're absolutely right. Tune. A proper tune. you this thank you very much i think i can pull it off it 
Is your sub goal still Lego for Clark? I don't know. Is that what it says? <laughs> Manage goals. Oh, it doesn't have a title right now. At least when I open it up, it doesn't. Oh, Jaws, your little shark with the headphones is cute. <laughs> yeah, more and or less toast for Clark, exactly. Somebody said, hey, Ed, in chat. <laughs> Realizing how out of the blue that was for everyone else is really funny. <laughs> someone, yeah, someone shut up in chat and said, hey, Ed. <laughs> it made me laugh. And there we go. Welcome to the stream, everybody. <laughs> What's my Sona? Like, like how you use a shark. Um, I don't know if you've, uh, Jaws, if you've been here while I've talked about it, but I'm getting a, I'm getting a model made of like a mushroom person. No, it's gonna, it's gonna be a different mushy. It's not going to be moral exactly, but um, I'm using a lot of the a lot of the pictures that I put together for the moral model. I'm reusing on the like Pinterest board for them. But I'm really excited. Yeah, actual actual mushroom tuber. I'm designing a sona for a friend today. That's a raccoon. Cute. Yeah, I'm excited. I was talking about it sort of like briefly, but um, like two geek enders ago, uh, offhandedly, um, our, our guest on that episode was like, hey, do you guys want to talk about like AI making video now? And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I basically, I don't want to know. <laughs> But I wound up looking it up because I was like, I, I don't know anything about this because I'm not really on social media anymore. And I went to look it up and it freaked me out so bad. And I had this immediate thought of like, this is it. Because a, a, a while ago I had said at a certain point, AI is going to get to the point where I just don't want my face on the Internet anymore. I will have fed the machine plenty, you know. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, and I watched those videos and I was like, it's here. We did it. It's here now. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I, I basically said that I'm going to start transitioning out of being on camera. Yeah, and then delete everything. <laughs> I've thought about that before. And then just delete every video every, ever made. I'll just unlist them. Yeah. Um, you know, I would still, I would still be on camp for like geek enders and stuff, but 
<clears throat> Face unreveal. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, if I wanted to take it down in sort of like a halfway sort of way, just putting it behind a wall of some kind, that would make sense. Yeah, it started a whole, uh, sorry, we don't need to get into that again. <laughs> I don't need to get into it again. Um, but yeah, uh, long story short, uh, AI can, you can put prompts into AI and just make videos now. Um, and so combining that knowledge with the, what, and, and the information that we have about like deep fakes and all that, it's just, it's a bad time. Oh my gosh, Arnar! You've gifted 4,000 subs? That's bonkers. Thank you so much. That's, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah. I'll make sure Clark gets lots of toast tonight. <laughs> that just reminded me of uh, my kid's current fav favorite book I've talked about before is um, Elsie Pittick Skips in Her Sleep. She loves that book. When we went to the library and they asked her to write her favorite book on um, a little thing for their like book tree in the kids section she she put Elsie Piddick on there um but one of one of the things that they say in that book a lot is that uh everybody has a breakfast of bread and butter and a dinner of butter and bread and I think and I think about that every time my kids like I just want toast for dinner or something <laughs> This made me go make toast. Amazing. Fingers and hands still seem to be an issue. Start wearing a glove as a hat. <gasps> That's a good idea. I made a stack of eight slices of toast with my breakfast at a hotel once and the attendant was shocked. goodness well we have certainly talked about a lot today haven't we <laughs> yeah there was a um there was a hotel i stayed at forever ago that had the most amazing sausage. <laughs> it 
it was, I don't like sausage typically. And I ate one and then was like, what the fuck? And I ate like 10 of those shits. And I still, to this day, no clue. I have no clue why those sausages were so good. <laughs> but it was an all-inclusive, like, you get breakfast. So I was like, I'm going to just eat as many as I want. And I ate so many of them. I think it was when we were in Germany. They were just like tiny little, little baby weird sausages. And they were so good. Yeah, continental breakfast, the best. I don't know what I'm doing with my hat anymore, but it's whatever. All right, gig. <sighs> Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. Marlos, thank you for the 52. Drum for the 63. Board Geek for the 117. Prince Kaitsu for the 78. Soul Edgar for the 102. Endeavor for the 81. Weeda for the 6. Southern Vices for the 78. Plasma Phoenix for the 72. Happy six years. Happy anniversary. Thank you very much for the support. Junior is Junior. Thank you for the 40. Shifty Monk for the 80. Astro Moon for the six years as well. Thank you so much. Happy anniversary. Um, Arnar for all the gifted subs. Thank you again, bud. I appreciate it. 4,000 is crazy. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. Thank you, Arnar. Itany, thank you for the 13. Um, and Poldy for the 73. Thank you, guys. We had a chat, Valentine, from Arnar saying, sending thanks to Dodger, fellow mods, and good folk in the community for making this a fun, comfy place to hang out at. Tomorrow I'll be IRL snow running with gear and things to where the ship is. And then it's the sea on Tuesday. Wishing everyone all the best. Quota? And geekins. Yeah. <laughs> Wishing everyone all the best quota and geek. I was like, I'm reading this through a hat, so maybe it's the wrong word. <laughs> Catch you in late April. Doog hug. Thank you, Arnar. Stay safe, bud. <laughs> okay, no one took great leader, so I will take it. It's mine now. It's mine now. Happy Chef TV is making chicken biryani. Well, if you insist. <sighs> All right. Go say hi. We've got Sunforge tonight. If you guys want to watch that, it's on Joe Fudge's channel uh, at like 8.30 at night, England time. But otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow. My kid's back at school, so we're back to our normal uh, schedule. And we're going to keep playing Banishers because it's fun. It might turn into a once a week thing, but currently I want to keep just playing it. So that's what we're going to do. Hey, thanks, everybody. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Take care of yourselves and bye-bye. Beep boop.